For more on the impact of Lilly's direct to consumer push, let's bring in Jared Hulls, healthcare sector strategist at Mizuho. Jared, happy new year to you. Good you to too. See you. Thank you. I mean, what's today? Today is uh, the fourth. fourth. So, 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 Jared, it's the first time on this year, is that right? Right. This is so, what if we have, year, for example, what if we have a guest on the first time in like April? Uh huh. I'll say Happy New Year. That's Just a problem. You will now. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, Jared. Anyway. <laughs> Happy New Year. Um, <laughs> how, how do you assess this news for Lilly? What do you think the, the, bigger, the bigger chess strategy is here? Well, yeah, I agree with the data aspect. I think that's huge. I mean, just removing the middleman, the concept of just taking the pharmacy channel and the supply channel out of the equation and also controlling the narrative of the drug launch itself. I think so much has been made about how is this launch going to go. It's obviously under a microscope because of the sheer number of patients it can get to. They obviously want the safety element to be first and foremost and, and drive adoption. So I feel like if they can control the drug launch itself into the hands of patients that it should be going to, that helps them a long way. I mean, there have been so many reports coming out of Europe and other jurisdictions about all of these side effects. I think the best thing that they can do with the target on their back with this launch, which is definitely going to be the biggest in history, the combined companies rather in this setting, they need to do a good job of managing it. I think this helps them do it. And the FDA is also examining a lot of the side effects associated with all of these GLP-1 uh, drugs. So, I mean, I guess that's an issue. But you still need a doctor to write a prescription. So in terms of getting the, the prescriptions into the right hands, they made a big deal of that in the press release about, uh, you know, it being used for obesity as opposed to cosmetic weight loss. Can they really control that if they're fulfilling prescriptions that are written by somebody else? Well, these, I think that the doctors are going to be part of this equation, right? This is a telemedicine app, so to speak, that they're going to kind of license and control along the way. So I feel like that's definitely part of it. Um, the cosmetic piece, you know, we've talked about it many times. I, I think the, the bolus of patients that have gotten on the drug to start don't need it as much as the medically obese or the definitively obese community that doesn't have access. That could also open the door here because a lot of that population, middle America, other geographies that don't have access to really good care can now go online and get the drugs. That might open the floodgates even more for the patient population that actually needs it, as opposed to like the Hollywood population that wants it to lose 15, 20 pounds. You know, um, you mentioned the, the, the pharmacy channel, okay, and, and how this might be. And we saw it in the stock market today, if you, you looked at some of the names there. Um, might it be different for the telehealth? So, so this launch might really kind of ease some of the problems that some of these health, telehealth providers have, because they are obviously at the whims of a lot of these, especially pharmacy companies, which if anyone has used any of these for any sort of drug, it, it's not a particularly efficient sort of thing. So I wonder if it actually, this is a benefit to some of these tele, uh, telemedicine companies who want to prescribe these drugs for a whole host of reasons. It's possible. I mean, the, the number of patients is so gigantic that if you can't get access for some reason to Lily Direct, you could say, hey, I'm going to try out these other sites. You could do Weight Watchers. You could do Teladoc. There, there are going to be so many of these services. Roe is another one that keeps on coming up in conversation. There are so many of them. It could drive broader adoption with the biggest player kind of spearheading it. But I think a lot of it is going to be, you know, patients that have tried Lily first having gotten what they've wanted, and then seeked another opinion. So they, there has been prescription data for ZepBound already, even though it's just available beginning of December. But through the week ending December 22nd, according to J.P. Morgan, more than 22,000 prescriptions have been written for it. Do you think that Lilly Direct will increase the number? Will it inc actually increase the number of uh, you know, prescriptions or drugs that they sell in the end? It should. I, I think it, you know, the, the purpose of the company's strategy here is to give the drug to as many people as it can within the boundaries of the label. And so the supply constraint situation, I feel, is the biggest impediment still. Long term, I think definitely over the next couple of months, I think we're way too early to be jumping to conclusions that the scripts are going to inflect in an even bigger way because of Lily Direct. But in time, I think that would have to be the tactic they're using. Last time you were on, we talked about markets up 17 percent ish since you came on and talked about the the undervaluedness of the name and how you thought that could play catch up. It clearly has. It's within the whisper of an all time high at a valuation that makes sense. I know they spoke today at a Goldman Sachs conference. I don't know if you can speak about it, but Merck to me still makes sense for a myriad of different reasons here. Agree. Um, 
117 from 100, not bad. I think it still has room to go. The comments today on M&A were, were essentially, they're looking at anything from zero to 15 billion, which is 95% of the XBI or IBB, whatever index you look at. I think they're still on the hunt. They've only spent about 23 billion over the past couple of years. Pfizer has spent way more than that. There have been other companies that have spent way more than that in the S&P. So there's room for more deals, and I think there's more room for the stock to inflect. I think the one important thing is, Obviously, Keytruda is still mm -hmm. there. I think a lot of those estimates for Keytruda are understated. And so if you move through the years, you're going to be you're going to be presented with a bigger base business and a bigger earnings base when it starts to erode. And I think that's really important, too.